Well, it's good, yeah. So this is going to be part one of a two-part series of helping you decide should you summon for Lust, Arrogance or Silas, Viana if there's the choice. Obviously, if you already have Silas and Viana, you should definitely summon for Lust and Arrogance. But enough of that. This time we're going to specifically take a look at the bond skills, figure out how good they are, how big of an impact they have on the character and in general how useful or useless characters are with and without the bond skates. So obviously the first thing we need to discuss is going to be the bond skates themselves. So let's go from left to right. Obviously we have here Lust, Arrogance, Viana, and below me is Silas. So Flames of Desire. Obtaining Hero Arrogance, the Cinder Stalker Zoo Kill to unlock the following bonus effect. During the ultimate deals 20% extra damage. All damage dealt to enemies inflicts burning. So Right here we obviously then have her ultimate, doing the ultimate deals 40% more damage and each basic attack lands 4 lashes in a row, lasting for 20 seconds. So what's going to be happening is that her damage multiplier, you can see the 40% as a multiplier of 1.4, gets increased to a multiplier of 1.6, so dealing 60 instead of 40% more damage. And then in general you could kind of interpret it as her getting... 50% more damage because the multiplier becomes 50% higher. Now sadly I'm not going to be able to completely test punishing pace because on the test server you already have lust and arrogance unlocked so I can't tell you the exact values for lust's uh, bond skill but I mean as you can see there you can at least at the minimum expect a damage increase of 20% and then obviously scales higher with Dolores etc. So you can already kind of see that your lust is definitely getting a huge benefit from her lord bonus uh, from the bond skill but it at least not is it's not anything game breaking really so on to the next one which is going to be Capric Capricus Love. Obtain Hero Lust to unlock the following bonus effect. Increases attack by 15% during the effect of Hellfire. And Hellfire is Arrogance's ultimate which has a duration of 20 seconds as well as increasing his damage multiplier and also changing his attack pattern as well as inflicting burn if he does uh, use his boomerang form. So what happens here is a very simple if he is in ultimate get 15% more attack. So for, for the impact of Arrogance, we're going to get into that in just a minute. Before we get into his skills, as well as Silas' skills, let's discuss the rest of the bond skills, which is going to be Pledge of Yore. Obtain Hero Silas the Blind King to unlock the following bonus effect. Bone Shield restores HP equal to 10% of attack per second. And then obviously what the hell is Bone Shield? Bone Shield, you can see it right here, increases physical damage reduction by 15% and deals AOE magic damage equal to 20% of the caster's attack to the effect bearer. So the unit, pretty much the units around the one that gets the Bone Shield every second and uh, airborne units take half the damage. And Bone Shield gets applied through Skeletal Shield, which is an ability that has a 30 second cooldown and applies a Bone Shield to the ally with the lowest HP percentage and range and the skill cooldown can be reduced by 2 seconds for every kill up to a minimum cooldown of 12 seconds after uh, 14 kills. No. 9 kills. After 9 kills. Sorry for that. <laughs> Last one. So what in Bone Shield happens is Viana heals the target, the Bone Shield is around and damages the targets around the one that has the bone shield. So her bone shield bond skill, the only thing it does is increase the healing, the one that has the bone shield around him to 30% instead of 20% of the caster's attack. So it's not even a damage increase, it's just a slight increase in healing the one that gets the bone shield receives. And obviously this skill honestly is quite useless. Joviana is going to perform anyway with or without the bond skill. And for Viana, there's no need to test it. There's no need to figure anything out. For Viana, her bond skill is negligible and pretty much less no one exists. Lost love. Obtain hero Viana the Wraith Queen to unlock the following bonus effect. During the effect of Shadow Cloak, soul sniping deals 100% extra, extra damage. Now we're going to have a look at what the fuck even Silas the soul sniping is. So, 
So sniping first gets mentioned in his talent, deals 20% extra damage to airborne units after attacking 5 times he triggers soul sniping on the next attack. And then before we get into ultimate we need to figure out what is soul sniping. Soul sniping deals 140% damage that ignores 50% of the target's defense. So keep in mind it deals 140% damage and Lost Love states that soul sniping now deals 100% extra damage which should put it to 240% damage that ignores 50% of the target's defense. Now to the last one which is the ultimate damage increases by 80% and each attack becomes soul sniping so he's permanently soul sniping and that soul sniping ignores all magic and def magic rest and defense instead of just 50% so it's like an increased soul sniping in his ultimate. So if you look at it from like a base perspective he should just be dealing about 50% more damage through ultimate because for going from 140 to 240 is around a 50% increase even less technically but that's not the way it is and I'll show you exactly why how and now so very simple so because a lot of people always ask how do they do the test here you have the screenshot this is the team and as you can see, we have a Lunaria, four Sealers, and then let's go over here. How did we place the units? Very simple. We have Constance. Constance is just there to keep A-Bomb alive and keep the tank alive. Oleg is just there to tank the boss, defend. Uh, he defends. Obviously, we, they take care of the top right. Uh, top left take care of the top right and you might have already noticed everyone is facing away from the boss so no one is actually hitting the boss which means Silas is the only one doing damage to the boss and then you have a timer right here and that timer is obviously ticking up depending on how long Silas takes to kill the boss so now that we figured out the how and yeah now that we figured out the how let's have a look at the what happened so, Silas build. Silas was running Warlord set as well as Infernal Raw set. And now comes the interesting part. Because I have a secondary account that was lucky enough, or unlucky enough, however you want to call it, to not pull a Vienna, I got to trying to build the same builds. And if you take a, if you take a close look at this, you can see I got pretty, pretty darn close. We have an attack difference of a single point of attack, an attack speed difference of 5, crit rate both being 100% and the same crit damage as well as no rage region. So we have an attack difference of 1 and attack speed difference of 5 between Silas skill on bond and no bond. So that is, makes this pretty equal. This is about as close as you're going to get to a test involving a bonded and a non-bonded Silas. And now, are you ready for the results? Because I wasn't. I mean, I already knew it, but I didn't have it like exactly black on white. So here we go. On the left side, we have Silas hitting with the spawn skill. And on the right side, we have Silas hitting. Uh, on the left side, we have Silas hitting with this non bond skill. And on the right side, we have Silas hitting with the spawn skill. So what you can see here is that obviously Silas does 21,110 on his basic attack. And the Silas on the right side does 22,107. Now you might be wondering why is the difference so big? So some of you might have already guessed it, but the answer is actually Pantheon. The difference maker right here is the Pantheon. So if we take a look at the no bond versus the bond, you can see that there's a difference of 3% in attack value as well as a difference of 3.5% in crit damage value. So it is a difference of 3% attack as well as 3.5% crit damage and even 6 attack speed, which kind of makes up for the fact that the left side has a tiny bit more attack speed. So that is your answer as to why the no bond is dealing less damage in comparison to the bond, because the bond just has higher pantheon bonuses. But enough of that, let's have a look at what we see here. So the second picture is going to be the ultimate. And I know it's a bit hard to see, but if you take a look, you see 166,620 versus 169,744, which might not seem like too much, but 
if you take a closer look, you can actually see that it is 169,744 in front of 169,744, which in comparison to them stating it only does 100% extra damage, they should have just said, you now deal double damage, because that is exactly what Sealers now does. Not only do you do 100% more, no, it is a real 100% more damage, and he's just going to hit twice instead of once. And now there's even a second effect that comes into play. Right here we have the ultimate hit being 166, and then the hit from the eye. So Sealers can summon an eye about an en above an enemy, and if you hit the enemy, the eye is going to shoot an extra arrow, which is going to do a bit more damage. In this case, 71,000. And I think you can kind of already see it in this complete fuck up that is um, this screenshot. It is actually even doubling the eye damage because the enemy is getting hit twice instead of once. So on the left side, you have around 220,000 damage. And on the right side, you have 440,000 damage. So because a lot of you have asked me, oh, can't you just already also give us DPS numbers? Here you go. First test of the day, Sealers and AMR bond versus bondless. Sealers bondless took 2 minutes and 54 seconds and Sealers with a bond took a minute and 41 seconds. The total damage you need to deal against the AMR boss is 10.4 million. So I've just obviously subtracted 10.4 million by 2 minutes and 54 seconds and obviously 1 minute 41 seconds giving us 59,700 and 100,000 damage per second respectively. So yeah, it is pretty much double damage. Obviously it's not quite double damage because Silas's uptime on his ultimate obviously isn't 100%. Alright, next one. Still same thing, but this time Nightmare 3 right this team over here so it's again Lunaria has the Lord bonus, Silas, then we have for Rage Region, Elowin, Laurel, Hollow, and then just for some extra damage we have Mary. And my goal here was to not introduce any potential different RNG. So there's like for example no Pyrus, no Salazar for bleeds, and we just have arrogance and Zillitude to make sure that we can actually break the shields. So this is going to be the formation and as you can see there's a space in between uh, in between Silas, Dolores and Hollow and that is where I was placing in Laurel and then taking her out again. Important to note here is Dolores only ulted every time Silas ult was ready so I could ensure that there's no Dolores RNG that makes one Silas do more damage than the other one. I also used exactly the same timing for putting in Laurel, taking out Laurel, so the runs were exactly the same. Are you ready for the damage difference? Because I wasn't. On the top right here, we have the total damage in million, and on the bottom, especially again for all of you asking, the gate boss time, so 4 minutes and 45 seconds. So, uh, obviously the total damage subtracted by the guild boss time being 4 minutes 45 seconds giving you the DPS. So yeah, Silas Bondless was able to do 61.8 million and Silas with Bond was able to do 127.9 million damage, which obviously to the trained eye already is double damage and just becomes even clearer when you take a look at the DPS, which gives Bondless Sealers 20, uh, 216,000 damage per second and Bonded Sealers 448,000 damage per second. And some of you might be wondering why the difference is now bigger. That is because obviously if you're using Laurel, if you're using Hollow, if you're using Elowin, that Sealers is go going to ult a lot more. And that's also in line with the meta of the game at the moment which is obviously going to be Laurel and uh, Hollow Spam or pretty much just old cycling really. And you could even sprinkle in a little bit of layer if you're fancy, which is what I did not do. All right, uh, this already, I guess, kind of concludes it and should give you a pretty darn good idea of how important Sealer's Bond skill is for him. It is legit doubling his damage. 
And there is certain things that a sealer with or with bond skill can do, and a sealer that doesn't have it just can't. For example, with this really good gear, you've seen the stats. Him only being able to pull 61 million kind of disqualifies him from most guild boss teams and also just harms him in pretty much any content, which still doesn't mean that he's a bad character. It's just just that him being maidenless is very, very hard on his damage. So now that we've checked out Arrogance, uh, Silas, it's time to figure out Arrogance and see how big of a difference does 15% actually make. So I think you can, you already kind of get the deal, which is going to be, we were running four Nightmare units just so we could uh, boost Arrogance at attack speed, as well as a Mary on the platform to ensure us doing a bit more damage against the boss because I was unsure that we were able to do the 10 million damage in the required time frame. And... Uh, yeah, so here we go just with the same formation. As you can see, everyone besides Arrogance is facing away from the boss and Arrogance uh, and Constance again was just there to keep everyone alive. So for example, Arrogance and yeah, she didn't ult. So there's no ult timing with Constance. There's no, oh, Constance build might have been better. So let's, let's have a look at the build. For this one, I actually needed two builds because I ran into a slight problem, which is going to, it's going to show a bit more in the gate boss uh, in comparison to outside. So on the left side, we have arrogance without a bond skill. And on the right side, we have arrogance with a bond skill. Now the big problem is for my AMR, my full run AMR, as well as my full run gate boss test, the basic attack of my arrogance was only on level two in comparison to test servers level five, which just shifts the results a bit in, uh, in AMR, so you gotta keep that in mind, but it isn't really that important for Gate Boss because in Gate Boss he's just ulting anyway most of the time. So yeah, let's let's have a look at the results. Before we get into the results, obviously we still need to take a look at the gear. And at least for this first one, there's a slightly more big difference, I guess, which is going to be, for example, on the left side, the no bond arrogance has a total of 170 attack more as well as 3% crit more and the bonded arrogance has obviously 170 less and 3% crit less but there's no difference in rage region and arrogance was again running a warlord set as well as a infernal raw set. So now onto the results just so you can see that it was already pretty close our no bonds Arrogance actually only did around 500 damage more on his basic attack, but now is the important part. You see, you see that the basic attack is about similar, which means they technically have similar builds and the only difference is the bond skill. And there's the difference. The difference is actually 55 million, which is... Is it 55? No, it's 45 million. And 45 million is about 33% of the total damage. So instead of uh, the initial thought of him getting 15% attack, the 15% attack probably gets added to like his total attack bonus. And then obviously with attack being the stat that gets subtracted by enemy defense and then multiplied turns into a bigger multiplier than initially thought, which gives us a damage increase of 33% in comparison to the initially standard 15% that is named in the skill description. Now, and basically now onto the build that was used for the full AMR run as well as the full gate boss run. I've already briefly talked about it. The fact that this left arrogance on the left side only has a uh, has a basic attack on level two instead of comparison uh, in, by comparison level five on the basic attack for arrogance, but stat wise it is pretty similar with only a five attack and around a hundred attack difference. So five attack for the no bond and 100% uh, and 100 flat attack for the bond skill as well as you can you can see it it is legit the same amount of crit damage so again it is pretty pretty close when it comes to comparing comparing the two so now into amr arrogance without a bond took 2 minutes and 50 seconds and arrogance with a bond took 2 minutes and 25 seconds 
And if you take a look at it, there's only a difference in DPS of 10,000, which is around the sixth of, uh, of obviously 61,000. And the reason for that is they were only able to ult twice, I believe, in the whole duration of AMR. And furthermore, it would even be even closer together if we did have the full, um, if we did have the full leveled up basic attack. But now on to guild boss. Guild boss, same scenario as with the Sealers. Again, running four Nightmare Fighters to fully boost Arrogance. Here's the team comp that I used. Obviously a screenshot of the testing vid. If anyone really needs the footage, I already have it. And if you want to uh, <laughs> just have a look over it, feel free to tell me in the comments. So um, you can you can see the space behind the Loris. That is where Laurel was placed. And it was, again, the same the same thing I used to do for uh, for Arrogance and that is uh, for Silas and that is actually letting Arrogance ult and then activating Dolores and only activating Dolores when Arrogance was ulting as well as making sure my Dolores placements were the exact same in both runs which brings us to the final result. Arrogance and Arrogance with bond skill only have a difference of 20%. So the damage increase you can expect when you get your arrogance bonded in comparison to what your arrogance is doing now is going to be around 20% and DPS increase is around 70,000 which is pretty much in line with 20% increase which kind of shows the difference and really shows how broken Sila's bond skill actually is like the fact that Arrogance only gets 20% more damage while Silas gets a total of 100% more damage really shows that when it comes to importance of bond skills, uh, Silas is at the tippity top. Obviously, I can't give you the numbers for Lust and Lust will benefit from it. But uh, yeah, it's it's most likely going to be the benefit that Lust gets from Arrogance and Arrogance from Lust that's going to work together to close the distance between what Silas gets from uh, from Vyana. Because Vyana, let's be real here, Vyana's bond skill is super irrelevant. It doesn't matter if you're healing for 20% or 30%. It's kind of all the same. So on that note, I hope you enjoyed this one. Stay tuned for part two, which is going to be tomorrow, which is going, uh, which is me breaking down the effectiveness of the duos in every kind of content. Where can Arrogance last help you? How much can you expect from them in Guild Boss? How big of an help are they in AMR? And yeah, that's it. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like, subscribe, share it with Destin's father. Who knows? And we are not going to get passed by Destin in subscribers. So we see each other tomorrow.